Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss very basic and easy topic. That is QRP. I will only be discussing the very important practical points. Just to brush up your knowledge. Okay. So let's understand the anesthetic considerations which are important in QRP are first is the patient is always elderly. Okay, we know that uh, this is surgical treatment used to treat BPH. Okay, so uh, the patient will always be elderly. Okay, geriatric population, geriatric population over 60 years of age. Okay, next important implication is related to the position. Okay, what is the position? Yes, we all know it is lithotomy with slight Trendelenburg. What is Trendelenburg? Trendelenburg is at low. Okay. So we gave around 20 degree tilt. Okay. So our OT table is this and we will give slightly 20 degree tilt. Okay. This will be our patient in lithotomic position. Okay, so anesthetic considerations will be related to the first is geriatric population and next is the position, lithotomy and Trendelenburg. Okay. Now, I'll be discussing about the position first. So, lithotomy, lithotomy plus Trendelenburg. So why it is so important for an anesthetist? Hmm? Let me draw one diagram. Hmm. Or I can make it like this. Yes. Okay. Better. So first of all, define lithotomy. If somebody asks you what is lithotomy, so it is hip flexion. Hip flexion which should be around 80 to 100 degree or you can simply answer by saying it should be obtuse. Okay, the angle should always be obtuse for hip flexion and abduction. One thing is abduction means this movement. Okay. It should be 30 to 35 degrees. Okay. And the urologist will sit here. The urologist will enter the urethra by a urethroscope. And there will be one monitor connected to it. Okay. And there will be one irrigation fluid. For example, let's say 1.5% glycine. The urologist will be using irrigation fluid on this. Okay. So what happens actually? The lithotomy position has some complications. Okay. Because you can see this position. Okay. And we know that this position can cause peripheral nerve injuries. Very common. Okay. So can you answer any three? nerves that can be damaged during this position try to recall first is yes we can see the lower limb first is obturator obturator nerve okay next is saphenous nerve and the last is common peroneum so this is your viva question Okay, what nerve injuries can be caused during lithotomy position? Another thing, okay, this is was about the nerve injuries. Another thing which this position can create problems in geriatric population is about the venous cystasis. Venous cystasis like how? So we have to look into the pathophysiology. First of all, this surgery is done under 
spinal anesthesia we all know okay and what spinal anesthesia do is it do sympathetic blockade yes sympathetic blockade will cause the vasodilatation yes simple vasodilation so there will be pooling of blood pooling of blood into lower limbs yes okay we understand this much so we gave a spinal anesthesia the patient was supine okay and the pooling occurs vasodilation occurs and now the patient is made into the lithotomy position okay so what what will happen all the blood which is pooled in the lower limbs will now be directed towards heart simple it will be directed towards heart and put load on heart which we call as venous stasis or you can say circulatory overload okay circulatory overload can occur so circulatory overload actually is occurring one because of the position and second because of the irrigation fluid we are going to use yes irrigation fluid also okay because irrigation fluid will be absorbed by the venous sinuses of the surgical capsule so about the lithotomy i will once again make you revise what are the implications related to the lithotomy position i will make you once again revise quickly quickly yes so lithotomy plus prendelenburg around 20 degree tilt it will cause venous stasis first point second was peripheral nerve injuries okay circulatory overload and we have to manage all these intraoperatively next thing next thing we will read about which is related to trp was the geriatric population okay the extreme age or the you can say the geriatric population so actually there are some physiological changes okay in the old age group so i will go system wise let's suppose if you talk about the cns the patient will be anxious they will be having sluggish responses sluggish reflexes and of course they are more prone to hypothermia yes another thing is if i see about the heart cardiovascular system the baroreceptor reflexes will be slowed down which will lead to severe hypotension as compared to any young patient more chances of cardiac arrest arrhythmias due to the same cause okay also they have weak conduction so always and always monitor heart rate and bp in geriatric population whenever you give a spinal okay next thing about the renal system so due to hypotension which will be more profound in these patients aki can occur or renal dysfunction can occur and about the pulmonary function if i say these patients will be having reduced reserve they might be copd smoker okay copd patients so how we have to deal with all these intraoperatively i tell you some points like the patient will be anxious but will you give pre medication to these patients like midazolam or etc we generally don't give pre medication in these patients why 
because we have to identify turp syndrome which we will be discussing later okay also they have already have sluggish reflexes another thing is we see the reserve is less okay so always provide oxygen supplementation to these patients intraoperatively or bronchodilators okay and one more thing they have weak skeleton weak bones and we want to give lithotomy position so there is a increase risk of fractures okay this you also have to keep in mind so regarding the trp surgery the main anesthetic considerations are mainly related to the geriatric population as well as the position okay what else we need to remember or what can be asked in your exam is other complications which can happen intraop in trp we talked about circulatory overload okay circulatory overload overhydration yes overhydration which can lead to hyposmolality yes hyponatremia dilutional hyponatremia because of the more infusion of fluid rather than electrolytes and one more bladder perforation can also occur so these are some complications related to the trp and also actually what we have to remember that what we have to take care intraoperatively is circulatory overload so already if the patient is 60 year old he or she must be having some comorbidities associated okay so there is an increased risk of mi in these patients so you have to judiciously infuse the fluid okay there is an increased risk of mi hyponatremia hyponatremia next can lead to turp syndrome okay and because of the overhydration and also the cold saline or cold glycine irrigation fluid is being used the these patients already have are prone to hypothermia so there is an increased risk of hypothermia in these patients okay so intraoperatively all these complications may happen you have to take care of okay now we will see a little more detailed discussion about trp okay trp syndrome okay and we all know this is a favorite question of examiner in dnb exams okay most repeated question in dnb exams and practicals so <clears throat> first of all they ask that how will you identify so first sign how will you identify the patient will yawn the patient will get dizzy okay restlessness mental confusion these are the cns signs which you can note very first nausea vomiting will be there the patient may complain of the headache okay visual disturbances which is very important we will see later how i visual disturbances and unstable hemodynamics when you will look at the monitor there is a heart rate there is blood pressure so you will see that the heart rate is going down on there is unexplained hyper hypertension okay and refractory bradycardia <laughs> all these will be occurring because of one reason and that is low sodium what we call as hyponatremia okay another system that is cvs in cvs patient might get pulmonary edema or congestion or cardiac arrest anything can happen 
we can see from here also in blood vessels hemolysis can occur okay arrhythmias can occur all these things are signs and symptoms okay signs and symptoms related with the trp syndrome now we will see how can we reduce this trp syndrome okay what precautions should we take intraoperatively so that we can reduce chances for patient to get trp syndrome first of all it depends on the duration of surgery duration of surgery is very important and experience of the surgeon okay it should get finished in 1 hour okay in 1 hour the fluid rate of fluid absorption is of the irrigation fluid is 10 to 30 ml per minute if it exceeds this there are increased chances of getting trp syndrome first thing next thing is we know that the patient is lying here okay and your irrigation fluid is here it is put on one stand we have all seen that okay so there is suppose this line this line is the pubic symphysis of the patient so the height of the stand they say should be 60 cm and not more than that understand so maximum height should be around 60 cm or you can say 2 feet above the level of pubic symphysis of the patient okay maximum height of irrigation fluid bag and they may ask you the reason why because this leads to a hydrostatic pressure of 60 cm they may ask you that uh, how much pressure it is, is advisable to avoid that this is the maximum allowable pressure hydrostatic pressure okay 60 cm of water so all these things can be asked if you are having a major case on trp now comes the management part how will you manage So suppose a patient is showing some confusion symptoms getting restless and you are suspecting that maybe he has got trp syndrome so how will you manage it first of all you have to stop surgery stop infusing more of the glycine or the fluid whatever you are using and obviously you have to diagnose as diagnose it as early as possible okay diagnose and treat is as early as possible the major pathophysiology that we saw was about the circulatory overload so what we will give we will give diuretics simple you can give injection furosemide 20 mg bolus is advisable okay obviously you have to look at the height it should not be more than 60 cm okay up to 60 cm above the patient the time of the surgery should be less it should get over by 1 hour and they also say that continuous flow irrigation system reduced turp turp syndrome as compared to the intermittent okay so continuous one should be used also what we give is uh, as pre op maintenance uh, fluid therapy for spinal hmm? so that fluid therapy should be given less okay and of course we can use prophylactically diuretics also and if we have to infuse some fluid uh, sorry infuse the blood if you have to do some blood transfusion so make sure that 
you should use that red blood cells rather than using the whole blood again because it can cause fluid overload and if you are suspecting turf syndrome intraoperatively you can send sodium levels serum sodium levels So the sodium levels uh, we will check, okay. And if they are less than 120, means if they are very less and the patient is also symptomatic, then you you may have to give hypertonic saline, okay. But hypertonic saline, three percent have to be given cautiously, okay. You have to give it slow as well as in divided doses plus you have to simultaneously keep on monitoring sodium levels we all know that if you infuse it rapidly so this is your viva question what it can cause it can cause cpm that is cerebral fontaine myelinosis cerebral pontine myelinosis okay so it is said that around 200 uh, 200 ml of uh, 3 percent normal saline you can give to the patient also uh, alternatively we can give mannitol okay if you don't want to give hypertonic normal saline we can give mannitol and then you have to give some symptomatic treatment okay we can also give mannitol and mannitol 15 percent okay and uh, if the patient is having symptoms of pulmonary edema you have to give oxygen to the patient okay if the patient is throwing seizures we can give benzodiazepine to the patient okay and if the patient is having some acute cardiac disturbances, you can give IV calcium. Oh, yeah, it's a symptomatic treatment. Whatever the patient is showing symptoms, you can give that. If there is blood loss, if there is anemia, okay, we already read that you should prefer giving PRVCs rather than whole blood. Whole blood to the patient. Now, uh, the other question that may be asked to you in your exams is what uh, other fluids other than glycine like what all fluids can be used or were used previously for this surgery and now why they have been discarded okay so first is saline saline can be used even in some centers saline is still used RL but the problem is that they can conduct electrical current okay so not being used sometimes water is used okay but the problem with water is that it is hypotonic and we know hypotonic solution can cause hemolysis of rbcs okay glucose glucose 5.4 percent is known to cause tissue charring so it can also be not being used can't be used sorry urea 1.8 percent it can crystallizes over instruments so also it can increase the urea levels in the body unnecessarily sorbitol 3.3 percent okay it can lead to hyposmolality dehydration as well as acidosis okay and then we don't want these next is mannitol sorbit uh, mannitol can cause all this and sorbitol can cause water intoxication please correct mannitol can cause hyposmolality dehydration acidosis and sorbitol can cause water intoxication so why we have uh, preferred glycine again because we want an ideal irrigation fluid and glycine is close to that 
ideal irrigation fluid should be actually non conductive which glycine is hmm, 1.5% glycine okay non conductive and it should be non hemolytic okay and the fluid should be transparent yes why because surgeon has to see through this fluid so it provides good vision more clarity okay it should be cheap or at least less expensive easily available all these things okay it should not react in the body it should be neutral and easily excreted out as it is so all these properties are present in 1.5% glycine but uh, if you infuse more of glycine then are uh, another question what it can lead to it can lead to glycine toxicity okay so they may ask you know, about the glycine toxicity yes actually in our liver this glycine is metabolized into ammonia water as well as glycolic acid hmm now this ammonia will be increased so there will be hyper ammonemia in the body which can be neurotoxic to us okay it can cause neurotoxicity it can lead to cerebral edema can cause seizures in the body okay and also it will manifest as visual disturbances in the patient from blurred vision to completely blind but this vision will return back to normal within 24 hours so we have to reassure the patient okay reassurance is the treatment another thing we if we want to deal with this uh, glycine toxicity is if if the examiner asks what can you give in drug okay so what can we give is arginine why arginine because via urea cycle it will stimulate a uh, metabolism of ammonia okay so i have tried to cover this whole topic into like one or two pages highlighting only the must know before going for any exam but this is the minimum about trp that you should know okay i hope you will be able to answer maximum questions out of this small video you can revise it just before your exam or just before going for practicals if you like this video please subscribe and do share in your groups for thank you for listening